We're about to learn a method that, other than factoring, is the easiest way to solve a quadratic equation. Remember, a quadratic has an x squared in it somewhere. And so some of the early methods, if you have a simple one, you can factor it, do the zero product property. Um, there, that's always what I check first. But even though completing the square can sometimes be pretty easy, this is what people go to. It's called the quadratic formula. And I know it's a mess here, but it is typically required that you memorize this, and with good reason. The question is where it comes from. It, it actually is someone completed the square and solved for x by completing the square. So it's actually based on the same idea that we did. But what they found, and I know this looks crazy, but if they completed the square generically, this is what always came out to be. And so, and then solved for x. So they found this is always the case. And so, instead of trying all the craziness with completing the square, if you memorize this formula, you can jump right to it and just start plugging and chugging. So, I'm gonna, there's a ton of these slides. They're all basically the same. I don't know if I'll skip some of them because it's all kind of repetitive. We're just plugging into a formula. But the idea here is that A is the term in front of the x squared, B is the term in front of the x, and C is the, co the, the term at the end, so it, um, the constant. So we're just going to plug in. So the formula is negative b, okay, well b is 9, so negative 9, plus or minus the square root of b squared, okay, well that's 9 squared, minus 4, it's always 4, times a, which is 2, c is negative 5, all over 2a. And I know that sounds terrible to memorize, but you get used to it. You do so many of these, it's pretty easy. Now, order of operations says we have to clean up under the root first. So just that would be where you'd run into trouble. And even under there, exponents are first. Be careful of the signs. There's a minus in there. So a minus and a minus are going to become positive. So if we clean all this up, we get down to here. Now, we know the square root of 121 is 11, so we're here. So we can add and subtract that 11. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is all just tidying up at this point. So they've worked it the two ways where they added the 11, subtracted the 11, and those turned out to be relatively understandable numbers. So let's try one here. So negative b is a, ne so it owns its sign. So it's negative, negative 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 5 squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. All right, we got a lot of tidying up to do. So I would have started in here. So I will fix this on the outside. So we're going to have 5 plus or minus the square root. I've got 25. Now if we do this, we get 6. We get 24 minus 24 all over 6. So I get 5 plus or minus the square root of 1 over 6, which is 5 plus or minus 1 over 6. And so we could go two ways. Since these are whole numbers, I'd have you finish it. 5 plus 1 divided by 6 is 1. 5 minus 1 divided by 6 is 4 sixths, or 2 thirds. 5 minus 1 is 4 over 6, 2 thirds. Okay, here's another. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a, oh, I messed up, sorry, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Now everybody owns their signs, all over 2a. Okay, we're going to clean this up. So I got 4 in there. Now I've got uh, some numbers I'm going to use my calculator on, but also I've got the 2 negative, so this is going to turn into a positive. So I add 4 times 4 times 6. Okay, so I get 96 in there, all over 16. Okay, negative 2 plus or minus 10 over 16. So I'm going to get 8 over 16 
or so I'm going to get negative 12 over 16. And I can simplify those. I'm going to get 1 half or uh, negative 3 fourths. Okay, I don't know if there's anything different about this. Same thing, plug in and chug in here. Mm, I don't notice anything different there. So I'll work another here. There's a lot of slides in this section, so it's all just plugging in. So I'm not sure I'm going to do all these, but negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. minus 4. So I guess maybe this is why. In front of the A that doesn't show anything, there's a 1. And so my C is negative 15. All over 2A. Okay, so just a lot of crunching, and I get down to 6 or negative 2. Okay, just plugging it in my formula. Now I'm tidying up. If someone misses it, it's that they struggle with the signs here. Um, I believe that'd be 96, wouldn't it? So if you've got a double negative in there, that's what you got to watch out for. So there's nothing particularly special about this one. I've got real numbers there, so I'm going to tidy this up. I get negative 8 over 2, or negative 12 over 2. And those tidy up to give us some nice numbers. But otherwise, the only thing different there is that you start with a 1 in front of the b squared. So that's, uh, that's it. Okay, now we're getting in some here where this often happens where you try to work underneath that root and it doesn't tidy up and you're going to get a root is left in the final answer. That's very common uh, when you do these and so let's try a couple of those. Okay, so I'm going to so I got 10, I'm getting minus 40 under there. Okay, I would prefer, yeah, if you've got the root, I would prefer that you just leave it right there. This is actually the common way that you would see it done, right here with this. If you're real clever, you might notice that you could reduce these by, uh, you can pull a GCF of a 2 out of here and, and reduce it to the bottom. I'll show you. You can reduce this to that, but I would take either. and. Uh, it would be good if you can see this. You can pull a GCF of 2 at the top. It, it factors, uh, reduces with the 2 out of the 4, and you could get that. But I wouldn't require that. Okay, so we've got negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4. Oh, hold on, I screwed up again. Yeah, that's the trouble. you got to make sure 
negative b, make sure you don't pick the wrong thing, b squared, I picked a instead, b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. Okay, so 11 plus or minus And I think that's as far as we can go. I don't think 61 breaks down. I, I could be wrong about that, but so I think there we go. Okay, I'm just trying to see what they're doing here. Yeah, I don't see a value in doing another one of these on this, but so here's all they so show us here. I get an answer of negative 10 plus or minus 4 square root of 3. This is what I meant before. You can pull out a GCF, which is a 2, and the 2 could cancel with the 2 out of there and reduce down to this. But that's all. So, again, there's so many of these. I'm going to skip a couple and just get to the punchline. It's plug and chug. Let's see. Okay, so now this is a common thing that will happen. So I crunch my formula down. I get all the way down to here, and I get a negative underneath that radical. Now what this means there are no real solutions because we can't have a negative square root and I don't think our book looking at what's ahead I don't think our book is going to tackle this but this is an acceptable answer that involves something called imaginary numbers or complex numbers so I will leave that topic to uh, a harder course. You'll see that coming in the next level. Algebra 2 would probably see this, uh, maybe an advanced Algebra 1 course, but we're going to follow the book here at this point. We're going to say this is no solution, but don't just disregard it. I would want to see this, um, and I'd again, I, I don't know if I'll talk about those. I don't think I'm going to, but now I'll work a couple. It's the same thing. We're just going to get a negative under there, and I don't want you to disregard that. For now, you can see that there are no real solutions. What you're going to say is you're going to get, uh, so we're going to get complex solutions or imaginary solutions. But so let's just plug it again. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, what do I get under there? So I get negative 128 all over 8. Now, if you see where this is going, I'm going to get a negative under that root, so we're going to get stuck. Okay, so we get that negative underneath there. So we're stuck, we can't go any farther. So theoretically, we call this no solution. What happens is there are no real solutions. There are no real answers for this, but there are imaginary ones, which again is forthcoming. Um, hold on. Let me see what we got here. I just keep plugging and chugging all of these. Yeah, there, there's a lot left. I'm going to jump ahead here to this one because that's just going to be a repeat. Now, what's happened here is that we are not set up to even use the quadratic. We've got to get it set up pro appropriately. So we're going to just tidy up. We're going to set this up so we've got this. All we did is foil or distribute this and tidy up. Now, remember with the quadratic, we want it to be equal to 0. So we need that, and I don't think I mentioned that. So it needs to be equal to 0. And now we're ready to use the quadratic. We plug it in. We get the same kind of stuff. So let me work one here. The only difference is we're not quite prepared for the quadratic yet. But if we just distribute and tidy up, we're ready. So I'll do this one. b squared minus 4a. Oops, should be a negative there. All over 2a.
Okay, um, I'll show you this. So remember, you could pull a GCF of a 2 out of the top. Oops. And you'd get... And then those two can cancel. And you'd get this. I think we probably should be doing that. Um, I don't usually count off. I would probably just take give you credit for that, but it can be done. Okay, for the sake of time here, these are all the same. Let's just keep going to some harder ones. Um, what we're going to do here, anytime we have fractions, I see students a lot of times don't take the time to fix this, but they should. So if I have these fractions here, I can do our trick where I'm going to multiply everything by their LCD, which is 6. Every term is going to get multiplied by 6, and what that's going to allow me to do is clean out all the fractions. Now, when I do that, I now have something. It's still not going to be easy, but we're not dealing with fractions. They set it up in order to do the quadratic, so it's equal to 0. Then they just crunch it down, and from there it's the same. So let's do one of those here. I'm going to multiply. You see the LCD here is 12. They could all turn into 12. Look at all the fractions. They could all have a denominator of 12. So I'm going to multiply a 12 times, I should show it here, 12 times the whole thing. Everybody's going to get multiplied by 12. So 12 times 1 fourth is going to be 3 c to the second. 12 times 1 fourth, 3. 12 times 1 third, negative 4 c, and I get 12 times 1 twelfth is 1. Okay, now I set it up to do the quadratic. And again, it's going to be the same thing here. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, just a whole lot of crunching. Okay, I'm going to pull a GCF out. So this is true, but we're going to pull a GCF of the 2 out of here. And I'm going to show you that what's 6 is really 2 times 3. So now that they're factored, you can cancel down. And your final answer is going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of 7 all over 3. Now remember, it's been a while since I've said this. This is really two answers. This is 2 plus the square root of 7 divided by 3. This is 2 minus the square root of 7 divided by 3. Okay, I'm going to just do the setup portion of this and then not do the formula. The LCD here would be 18. I could look at these fractions and turn everything into an 18. So I'm going to multiply the whole thing through by 18. Okay, so I've run it through there. Now let's prepare for the quadratic by sending that 9 to the other side. It's got to equal 0. Okay, same from there. I'm sure it's terrible numbers. Okay, let's see. Yeah, there's really nothing special about this one other than terrible numbers. They just had to send the 25 to the other side before they could begin. Yeah, here's why they're doing it. What happens underneath there is you wind up with the square root of 0. This actually can happen quite a lot. And so that's the square root of 0 is still just 0. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, hold on. Update check here. Let me see where we are in the big picture. OK. Let's do just this last one. So uh, let's see. Well, this is already set up. Yeah, this is a bad choice because we could actually, <laughs> this is all ready to be factored. So this is a bad choice to do this by the quadratic, but nonetheless, so negative b plus or minus, but it'll still get the same thing, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4, a has got a 1, c is a 25, 
all over 2a. Okay, so I've got negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 100 minus 100 all over 2. And the reason they're doing this, and actually the, I see why, that's why they chose one that can be factored, is that this creates the 0. We didn't even need the root. So I've got negative 10 plus or minus 0 over 2, because the square root of 0 is 0. So what I've got is negative 10 over 2. Oh yeah, here's another point about this. If you have that become a 0 under here, then you're only going to get one answer because I no longer need the plus or minus, and so my solution is just negative 5. Okay, one more of the same thing. You'd, you're going to get a 0 under the root again, and you would get just one solution. But again, I'm, I'm going to skip this. We've done plenty of these.